Hi YouTube. Uh, I bought this property about five and a half years ago. For those of you that have been following on YouTube, you got to see how raw it was when we originally bought it. When I bought this property, about three months into it, I found out that it had really hard iron in the water. So uh, a few ways you can treat iron one is to buy a really expensive filter system that you have to add chemicals to on a regular basis. You can also uh, do an old school te technique, which is put in a settlement pond. That's really popular uh, down here in Florida where they have real hard iron. And the more I read up on it and the more classes I took and the more videos I watched, um, I realized that it's going to cost a lot of money where we're at because we have a lot of sand. So I figured why not do double duty and make it into a koi pond. Make it beautiful. Make it a part of our, uh, uh, basically a focal point of our nursery. That kind of progressed to actually uh, have it as a centerpiece for when we have special events here. When we have our spring festivals. And also, I had a few people come in and said, this would be a really beautiful place for weddings. I started doing koi ponds about 10 years ago and I fell in love with just koi ponds and, and the beauty and, and water gardens. And I just thought it was something really nice to um, add to most gardens. I, I, I feel like if you want to have a bonsai garden, Koi ponds are kind of the natural progression. It, it is a separate hobby, and admittedly, it's something that I'm still learning, but taking a lot of classes, uh, watched a lot of videos. I've had been fortunate to be friends with uh, the president of the Koi Club here, and uh, I personally know a, a national judge, and, and they've been giving me pretty positive reinforcement to start doing ponds. So I did this specifically to say we can do ponds. <laughs> so this is also a, another aspect of the bonsai garden is if we're going to do koi ponds or even just water gardens we need to have a nice display and this is about 70 percent done. Uh, so I wanted to wait until we were about 70 to 80 percent done before I started the video. However, I do have a lot of photos of what we've done over the last three years. I've been working on this pond for about five months and I've taken photos throughout the last five months. However, I haven't started videos uh, until today because I wanted to basically be able to show you the progression um, from this point on. We have so much more work to do. So anyway, this is my first attempt at a large pond. The pond's 48 feet by 42 feet. It's 12 feet deep with a four foot ledge that goes eight foot out. I wanted to make sure that it was deep enough to where we weren't gonna have a problem with predators coming in, cranes and uh, any of the wading birds and raccoons to get to the edge and, and wipe out the fish. Uh, but I also wanted it uh, deep enough to where if we were gonna use it as a settlement pond, that when we drew from it, we would have plenty of reserve. So just to go over a little bit of what we did with the pond, um, I had a backhoe, which I have some YouTube videos on. I bought it specifically for this pond. Uh, I dug it out. Originally it was 30 foot by 20 foot, uh, we later expanded that, uh, but at that point it was a 12 foot straight shot. I felt for liability purposes if somebody fell in or if somebody wasn't paying attention, we should have a shallower area to where they actually could stand up above their head. So we ended up putting the shallower area. There is one little step that gets to about three foot. It's not child friendly. Uh, however, we do have a fence around the whole property uh, and we do have signage coming. We have coping stones underneath the liner all the way around the edge. It's really important to have the coping stones in. The coping stones gives you that definitive edge. I ended up 
going with uh, recycled material. These are actually old um, uh, broken up concrete uh, walkways. It ended up saving me about $6,500 in stone cost. However, if somebody did their own pond, I would suggest real stone. It looked a lot prettier. I think as these age, they'll look really nice, especially when moss starts to grow in and amongst them. And when we do more landscaping in with them, that'll be really nice. But uh, it does have a different look. I went with real stone inside of the water feature and anything that was connecting with moving water, uh, specifically because uh, concrete is supposed to be pretty alkaline and I didn't want to change the pH of the water too much. By the time we get the weddings involved, we'll have a walkway that'll come out in front of the koi pond, leading to this bench and also to a, a 10 by 10 deck that'll have a pergola over top of it that'll have wisteria vine growing all up the pergola as the living roof. But we have two really nice specimen European fan palms uh, that we put in to kind of set up the entryway and we will put a eight foot wide archway uh, in between those two. I think that'll be a really nice entry point in the garden. We are going to start doing this commercially but there's no secrets. None of this stuff is, is, a, is a deep dark secret. It's just physical backbreaking labor to be honest. Moving the stones was, was exceptionally hard. Some of the larger stones were 350-400 pounds each. Thank you very much for watching.